Good evening guys, this is uh, Prathamesh from Metalwani and today we have with us uh, Thomas Youngblood from Camelot. So would you like to uh, very briefly introduce the band Camelot to people who have never heard of the band before or just coming across it for the first time? Um, well they can go to, to uh, the Wikipedia and learn everything but uh, okay. it's a band that I started several years ago and uh, you know we've been able to um, be in the industry for a long time, which is great. Um, our new album, The Shadow Theory, is uh, another step for us, um, both in terms of um, production and songwriting. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about the uh, the new album, and uh, anybody that doesn't know the band already, just go to Camelot.com and you can find everything you need to know. That's great. Uh, so how would you describe the evolution over time? I hear a lot of fantasy elements in the uh, albums which came out at the start of the decade and the last few albums have been more dark lyrically and musically mm -hmm. so how would you uh, look at the progression with the new album where are you heading towards well I mean I think in the beginning we were <clears throat> a little bit more like you said fantasy based um, but I found that to be at, at some point a little bit cheesy and also um, kind of limiting so we didn't want to paint ourselves into this medieval band box or <clears throat> mm -hmm. singing about dragons and stuff so uh, probably around the Karma album we started really di digging into more deeper topics getting a little bit more dark mm -hmm. with Elizabeth Bathory and these kind of things and from that point we've basically kind of introduced a little bit more uh, symphonic gothic elements into the band and um, yeah, it's basically been kind of an interest of mine anyway to be and to be able to kind of include that into the music mm -hmm. was a good move. And uh, where you're looking at with the new album, I from what I've read and I've heard, uh, there seems to be a more futuristic aspect to the music as well as a, a lot of uh, stuff about uh, robots and the influence of society with mm -hmm. technology and stuff like that. So how are you? Uh, how have you looked at implementing a futuristic setting in the music? Yeah, I mean, we, we would never go like totally crazy with with um, changing the music. We still have the symphonic metal, mm -hmm. but we had introduced a little, some different sounds on some of the songs to kind of, um, you know, to make the, the whole concept make sense musically. Um, but, you know, in terms of the lyrics, all the lyrics are basically metaphors for, for life and what was going on today. And, um, you know, we're interested in AI and all of these things, but we're also interested in the psychological aspect of what's happening in our, in our in our lives, and so that's also kind of married into the whole process. Okay, okay, that's great. Um, so, uh, so this the new album is a concept album, from uh, what I've understood, and uh, it's you've had a break. I, I'm uh, I assume the previous album wasn't a concept album, but the one the first album with Tommy was. Yeah. Uh, so, do you see a, uh, do you have a need to make concept albums because generally there's a nice structure around concept albums and uh, you can build a, an atmosphere behind it or mm -hmm. is it just a one-off uh, thing where you would like to switch in uh, between the choices? Well, this is more kind of like a hybrid. I, this is a, more of a mixture of Silverthorn and Haven because it, there's a concept around the whole album but it's not a story like Silverthorn. Okay. So it's important that this record, for example, you can pick any song and it doesn't it's not part of some storyline. You know, you don't have to listen to the whole record okay. front to back to get some kind of a message. Um, so from from that aspect it's a concept, but it's more all the songs have some red line through it, but mm -hmm. it's not a story based concept. All right. And uh, one of the features of Camelot is trying to integrate some of the technicality using solo and stuff like that with catchy lyrics, uh, with catchy music. And um, so are you looking at changing this? Because I, I, from what I'm hearing, you're also, uh, you've also implemented a more progressive style in a couple of songs in the new album. So um, um, this, this make, On this record, there's it. everything. There's, um, there's some prog elements. Mm -hmm. Proud and the Broken has some pro uh, prog stuff. Um, you've got uh, Amnesiac, which is more straight ahead, kind of like something you would have heard from from Haven, like uh, Insomnia, for example. Then you've got Phantom Divine, which is um, the, the trademark Camelot double bass, big chorus so type song. So it's full of, a, of all different kind of ideas and, 
uh, information. There's 11 full songs on the record, so okay, <clears throat> there's, there's definitely something for everyone. So a question which might be a little controversial, I would say. So I'm a, I'm a huge Tommy Carriage fan from his Seventh Wonder days. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I listen to his vocal delivery in um, Camelot, I see a stark difference. I feel like he's trying to imitate a bit from the Rai Khan days. Mm -hmm. Is this something you deliberately do to appease long-term fans? Or is it just something part of uh, your musical vision? Um, I don't hear that at all, to be honest with you. I hear definitely a contrast between Seventh Wonder, but it's not... I mean, if you listen to a band like, for example, Queensryche with mm -hmm. Todd LaTorre, he's trying to sound just like Jeff Tate. Mm -hmm. This is not the same thing. Okay. Um, uh, so I, I disagree with that. All right. But you're happy with uh, his parts and um, mm -hmm. all his vocal performances. According to you, they fit the uh, vision of music perfectly? Absolutely. I mean, okay. also the fans agree. The Haven is the was our biggest album mm -hmm. to date. So um, there's there's definitely no no questioning the decision and the direction. Okay. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about the new guest vocalists that you have in the album. You have Jennifer Haven from Beyond the Black and Lauren Hart from Once Human. Um, so one question is. Um, how, would, how do you select the guest vocalist generally? How do you listen to someone's music and decide, okay, I think these, uh, these women or these guys should be included in mm -hmm. the upcoming album? Well, I mean, uh, I do a lot of research. I check them out. Like uh, Lauren Hart was um, on tour with us. Well, she played with us when we opened up for Iron Maiden in California. Mm -hmm. um, Jennifer, I've heard her already through Beyond the Black. I know her voice, style, mm -hmm. technique. So it's pretty... I mean, if you work with pros, they, you, you know that it's going to work somehow, you know. Um, and both of them fit perfectly on the record. They definitely add a spice to the album that, um, that, we, that we thought would be cool. Mm -hmm. And it worked out. Okay, that's good. And um, another thing, since, since you mentioned about production right at the start, uh, when I hear the album, I, I find uh, some nice... Uh, like electronic elements that have been added on mm -hmm. the production side of things to of course give it a futuristic feel mm -hmm. how challenging was that because uh, I, there were a couple of ele electronic elements in the previous album but this one seems to have mm -hmm. a lot more so how big of a challenge was that um, I mean there's a song like Amnesiac that has some, some uh, synth things in it there's not really a whole lot more on the record I mean um, if you listen to maybe Phantom Divine has like a nice approach on the on the verses in terms of the flange sounds, mm -hmm. but there's it's not really that drastically different from from Haven in terms of keyboard sounds. There are some definitely some a few modern elements that are added for the storyline, but in general, it's um, you know just like I said, a, a, a tiny little spice to to kind of back up the the the, the concept, you know. Okay. Um, so uh, I've actually like been asking a couple of questions to fans on Facebook and Reddit and uh, I'll over the next few minutes I'll just discuss some of the in questions which I found interesting mm -hmm. um, so first off uh, would you be interested in re-recording some of the older songs with Thomas now at the helm perhaps <coughs> as bonus tracks for the upcoming albums not really um, I don't see the point really mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons that Camelot has been around for 15 plus years because we are about now and the future. We're not a nostalgia band, mm -hmm. uh, tribute band. Everything's about you know the new record and of course we still play songs from from the old catalog. But if you look at our set list now, it's basically mostly uh, Haven and Silverthorne, and then we have you know a few songs like March of Mephisto and songs like that. But there's really no there's really not a really good reason to do that. I mean, other than for people to want to compare, and that, what is that going to do? Nothing. Yeah, sure. Um, so speaking about um, your upcoming tour, uh, a lot of people had uh, the question on their mind, would you be again bringing the guest vocalist because a couple of your previous tours you did bring them along? And if so, could you give us a hint which, which are the ones are going to come? Well, a North American tour, Lauren Hart will join us. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't decided yet for Europe. Uh, Lauren will also join us in Japan, mm -hmm. but in Europe, you know, we'll, we'll see a lot of people on a tour, you know. But I've got a couple of people that I'm, I'm going to look at and discuss with the other other guys. So we haven't decided on Europe yet. Okay, 
and uh, so uh, for a long time you guys were planning to make a live dvd mm-hmm. and it's been delayed a lot what has been the problem i've heard you're going to make one for the upcoming tour for sure so what what has gone wrong with the previous uh, tra- attempts um the contracts making sure you have the right contract for it the, the budget i mean the the dvd blu-ray that we plan to do is going to be like over the top so we want to have the money to do it properly and um, up to this point, we haven't had what we felt was the right budget, the right partner, and now we have that, and now we can do it. Okay. Um, so I, I guess I already know the answer for this, but um, you know, now, nowadays a lot of bands are doing these anniversary tours where they would play <laughs> a previous album in its entirety. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I know what you mean. You don't want to go back into the past, but you know, as a one-off as a one-off thing, not to compare, just to just something for fans to remember, for you guys to remember. I'm sure you have good memories of uh, the previous albums, the previous mm-hmm. eras. Do you think uh, you'd be looking forward to something like this in the future? No, I don't find it interesting at all, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, we play enough songs from the back catalog mm-hmm. for that interest. But to go back and just like do, like for example, Black Halo in its entirety, yeah with a, a totally different lineup makes zero sense other than making money and mm-hmm. um and, and it's also a lose-lose because fans will what will like i said compare and it's like maybe it's better maybe it's not but there's always a, somebody's going to say this is not the same you know what's mm-hmm. the point it's really when you see these big anniversary things it's just a gimmick to sell tickets we're not that's not what we're doing all right now uh, appealing to you as a songwriter uh, so so a little bit maybe a slightly more technical question mm-hmm. would be uh, now when you think of you you want to sit down and make some music uh, what is the approach you take do you first set up a standard uh, say chord progression something like that and then work your way around adding some uh, gimmicks <coughs> here and there some licks or do you uh, or do you just just f- express yourself and see what sticks and then write it down later. There's, there's always different think. ways. A lot of times it, I have an idea for a drum part. Basically, most of the drums, I write the patterns. and the, um, <clears throat> So a lot of times I might have an idea for a drum riff, like a certain pattern. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I'll put that down with Superior Drummer in my computer. And then I'll... Uh, make a riff over top of this drum pattern or keyboard line. That happens a lot. Um, sometimes I might have the chords, like for Burns to Embrace, for example, the chords were there, and then we would, ba- we would start the song off mm-hmm. of that. Okay. There's all different ways. I mean, there's riffs, like if we're in sound check, I might have a riff in my head and start playing it, and I'll take my iPhone and record it. Okay. Uh, so I guess as a final question, um, if if you would like to introduce Camelot to someone, which three albums would you use? Yeah, super cheesy question, but which three albums would you use to introduce it? Um, well, I mean, I, I definitely, you know, since this album, the new album, Shadow Theory is not out, I would probably say definitely Haven, mm-hmm. um, The Black Halo, and probably Karma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot for your time. It's All been right. a pleasure. Thank you, man.